Okay, and my name's Ian Addison. I'm a <coughs> primary school teacher, not an ICT teacher. I'm a primary school teacher that is in charge of ICT. Big difference in primary school compared to secondary school. Uh, we were talking earlier, there, there tends to be sort of three types of people that are in charge of IT in a primary school. There's the people like us that want to be in charge of ICT. There's the person that's in their first or second year of teaching. You're young, you know how it works, you're in charge of ICT. Or you get the short straw of, well, you can do it because no one else wants to. So luckily I'm in the, I actually want to do it. Um, so I'm going to sort of show you some of the things that we do in a primary school. Um, I was just sort of saying, you know, after hearing some of the things that are really making people think and discuss and really challenging, I'm going to show you loads of stuff with pretty colours. Um, so, hopefully that's all right, but we'll see. So, we sort of teach programming, sort of, right away from reception. Um, and this is most schools. This isn't, oh, we do it because we are experts. This is most schools do this, actually. A lot of the things on this list are things that lots of schools are doing. Um, and some people in here, depending on your age, will have done things like the Roma, and I'll show that and things. And you've done that years ago. It's a basic form of programming. So I'll show you some of the examples that we've got from across our school. Things like programmable toys. Now, it's not really a language. It's up and left, and it's 90 degrees, and it's a bit of this and a bit of that. But they're having a bit of problem solving. They're having to reach an end goal of get this toy to there. But that's the start of programming. Now, I remember Roma looking exactly like that. We've got those in school. It looked like that when I was seven and we had one in school and I was in the top group for maths so I was allowed to use it. No one else was. It was a, you're allowed because you can use it. Um, and we said exactly the same thing um, but now we have the smaller ones as well in the school. Isn't, so, isn't this exactly one of the issues with teaching confusion though? It's, it's, it's the toy that if you done well in your real work, you get to play that. <laughs> it was, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not now. We do it across the school. Um, we, we go on to things like uh, To Go, which is a, a programme that just takes that toy and moves it onto the screen. So they're transferring the skills that they learn from up makes it go up and left makes it go left, etc. and putting it onto a screen. So just a slight difference, not a huge one at all. Um, but we've got children, you know, reception, they're doing that quite easily. Um, I don't need to give them any instructions. It's a, there you go, do it. And then they will then learn and they'll show each other and go from there. Before you go on here, um, just go back to you two go, sorry. sorry. That's an online tool, which means that once the children have gone home at the end of the day, they can log on and they can carry on and do more at home themselves too. It's not limited to when you're in school, you can only access it then. Yeah, actually only one of the programmes I've got is a paid for, you must install it on a computer. The rest are either, um, they're either online, uh, some are paid, I mean, two goes paid and online, um, but most of them are either free things or, or anything else. So, but yeah, two go is, you know, you can access it online, and our children do. This is another one from the same suite uh, of tools that, um, part of Logo, where you've got bits we have to repeat four and forward three, and, and it draws a square. So again, they're learning a sort of language, Yes, okay, so it's not anything really technical, but they're having to learn a bit of language on there. And you can move on to more complicated shapes um, if you know sort of angles and things as well. So that's, we're doing that sort of year three and four, roughly. Um, I could do the square with younger children, we just haven't as yet. So that's some of the things that we do. We also do a lot of things with online tools as well. So um, this website called Sploder, uh, talking about, as Tony was saying, why are they doing it? Just for fun, actually. This was shown to me by some children in year four, um, and this website here lets you make some games. Now, there's not really much coding in this at the moment, but they're having a think about, um, I've got to try and make a game, I've, and it's generally sort of platformy type things. So I'll click on platform game there. And the year four children showed this to some year two children. So this is nine-year-olds showing seven-year-olds how to make games. And this was happening at lunchtime in their own time. I was just there because there had to be an adult in the room. To be honest, I was doing my work. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, but the children came over and went, oh, by the way, we've just made these games. Can we put them on the school website? Of course you can. You know how. Stop asking. Do it yourself. <laughs> um, it's going to be blowing really slow. It's much quicker over, here. over there. It's much better signal, I think. Thank you. Um, so Sploder is a very simple tool, all completely free. You sort of drag blocks in, you drag um, enemies in and things to collect, etc. Uh, and that's one of the tools that a child has shown me and will now be in our curriculum next year. Because in primary, we don't have those silly exams that Drew was talking about, where we must make a six-slide PowerPoint. 
In primary, we only have tests in English and maths, so I can do what the hell I like, pretty much. The ICT national curriculum, as you were saying, two-page document, I cover that in four lessons. Um, two of game design and two of using Google and stuff. That pretty much covers the whole ICT curriculum. So if someone came in and wanted to assess our school, which they can, they can we've got good results and we're okay, but they can come in and say, have you done ICT? Which they'll never do. But if they wanted to, I can just say, yes, we have, but look at all the other stuff we're doing because of that. So I'm allowed to do pretty much what I want, which is great. So you want floor and you can drag floors in there. And there's no code at this stage, but they're having to think about game design. And they're thinking about, well, actually my character can't jump that high, so what do I need to do? What change do I need to make to the game that I've done to make it either easier or harder or, or anything? Because when we've given them game design, we found the first thing they want to do is make it really, really hard so no one can complete it. <laughs> and I've then said to them, right, imagine that um, Call of Duty or whichever age appropriate game they're playing, um, was really hard and you got shot as soon as you started the game. Would you play it? Well, of course I wouldn't. Right, so what do we need to do? Oh, we need to make it so they can get started, but it's hard to win. Good. So we're then getting onto that, so how does the user get that program? What do they need to do with it um, to be able to achieve uh, on here? And I won't actually play the game, it's exploded.com. You're more than welcome to go and have a play with that later on. I wasted a good 20 minutes with that yesterday. Um, another one that we do, uh, Lightbot as well. Again, sort of thinking, you've got a little robot there who's got to move around that block in the middle and get to the blue square and then turn his light on. And you've got to put in, put in all the instructions before pressing go. So it's kind of turn left, forward, go there, and then you, know, you have to think about what you're doing and, and what will work. So we do a bit of that before we move on to proper games. I don't know. Um, but again, those are websites. They're on our school websites, the children go and do it at home, and they do. Because they know if they do something at home, I'll share it with the world and our block. You know, quite often children can say, can I share this with the world? But, well, maybe not all of them, not me, you know, but quite a few if you want to. <laughs> so the one we've done the most of, and the one that um, got us involved with BBC Click in the first place, was a program called To Do It Yourself, from a company called Too Simple. And this is um, installed on a computer, you must pay for piece of software. But it's about 350 quid, I think. Um, about that, isn't it? Yeah. 350, 400 maybe? Three, I think um, on size of school, three, four. Yeah, so we, we've done this across our school. And I feel a bit of a fraud up here saying, look at 2D itself, because the expert in the country is at the back over there. So he will show you much more. And I'll show you some of these examples as well, um, which he's very gladly shared with me. So we've been doing this. Um, I'll show you the year four example first, because it's always better to start with what the higher ones are doing. Um, where I put it? So we had a little pirate game here. Now this game, you've got your little pirate and he jumps around and he's got to try and get to, I forgot to read the instructions. Um, he's got to try and get to the little mermaid who's down in the bottom right hand corner. And this isn't the best example. I just thought, oh, I need an example. Oh, it's some holidays, what do I do? I'll go on the school server or, and go and find something. You've got to go and try and find the little mermaid down there, which is hard to do while you're talking and other things as well. So, We've done that with, we started with year five and six in September. We were, right, we're gonna do some games. And it was just game for game's sake, because like I said, I can do that. Then in year three, um, we, they were looking at the Tudors, and we started thinking, well, how can that work in the curriculum? So it was, it was quite a nice split between boys and girls. Um, the boys did, did one where um, Henry VIII was trying to avoid his six wives, you know? <laughs> and the girls went, did the Henry trying to collect six wives? It was, it was a quite a good split between the children. <laughs> they also did ones where, uh, because we talked about Henry VIII, he's fat. You know, they're seven. Henry VIII is a big fat man. He wants to go and eat lots of food. So they ran around, they went and collected lots of things. And we did lots of different types of games. We did platform ones, we did collecting. There's one over there on the left where you are a ranger that's got to go and collect the green blobs before the rhinos get you. It doesn't all make sense, but they're able to sit and have a play. As we went through the year, I thought, you know what, I, I might just uh, have a little bit of a play and see what else we can do. So we did this for year one. So these are six-year-olds who went on to make a platform game. Uh, so this is the Hulk, and he's got to go and rescue the people before the tanks come. Now the drawings are rubbish, they're probably about my level of drawing, but this is done by a six-year-old who's made a little platform game. And it's actually quite a hard platform game. 
when you're sort of talking as well. So that kind of shows you some of the things that you can do and that we are doing in school. Uh, and it builds on to this sort of level. And I show this all the time because this is the sort of level of game that you can get up to. From those crude drawings that, you know, Paul or Lou did in, as a six-year-old, right up to importing your own clip art, designing backgrounds, and making it based around a story of Robin Hood, retelling it. You've got to free your friends and go and capture, you know, free Maid Marion, etc., based around the game that's on there. And we, the way we do that is we use this program here. So I just, I'll show you very quickly, just to show you how easy game design is in our school. Now I know it's not at the level that secondaries are doing at the moment, but this is uh, quite a simple one. So you can make a little game on there. There's your little man. Um, you can build some walls, etc. My resolution's gone, so there is a bar on the side that will do that. Um, and what you can do is when you click on there, you get some code coming up. Now it's only very basic code, but if I, I've just said to the children, change the numbers, see what happens. And they go, falling speed, jump speed. Okay, well let's have a go at changing this to a million. That. Yeah, they'll go, let's put loads of zeros on. And you know what, if they delete it, there's a reset button, which is great. Now I've never really coded properly, um, but I wish that, I imagine that all of you that have, had a reset button, so you can just go, I've screwed up a bit today, reset back to where I was. Um, this is quite useful, so you can press all these things. So straight away on here, when I then go and play the game, my character will now do something slightly different. Um, he might jump a bit higher, he might not jump as high. If he only jumps a small amount, he says, he's going to jump at all. Have I ruined it? Completely. Ah, there you go. Too many things open at once on a crappy school network. Um, so then we looked at changing it, so maybe instead of, because he jumps quite high, he jumps about um, a third of the screen normally, maybe if we just jump a small amount, he just goes up one little block instead. You then got to think of your strategy to get from A to B to C. So the children are having to sort of think about, there you go, somehow turn it away again. And Flash is dying as well, good. So that's the sort of thing that we've been doing, we've been playing around with that right way through down to sort of year one. Um, how you go with to do it yourself, which is a, a great package. There are loads of examples, you can get all the links, and this is all on my blog, so you're more than welcome to take the address for this at the end. Um, like I said, there's a Robin Hood example, and there's a 2 DIY archive, um, which has not only loads of examples of um, game that children have made, uh, some that teachers have made when Simon has far too much time. Um, apprentice and election times are always good fun. Uh, the, correct me if I'm wrong, there was one when um, there was all the money and, uh, with the expenses for MPs, you have to be an MP, run around collecting money while avoiding something. <laughs> um, so you know, it's a bit of fun. <laughs> There's also uh, World Cup resources that another teacher's made and Year 7 platform games that Chris has, has lent me as well. So lots of examples of the sort of games that we're doing um, with our young children. And from there, we're not coding the whole thing, but we don't need to, because we're five or six. We are coding small bits to make a small, a small change. Some of the other things that we do in school, just because I was trying to think of what other code bits we have, we have um, some input-output type things with a program called Flow All, and this is a part of the curriculum, you must teach some control technology, although how many schools do in primary? You get emails all the time going, got to do it, I don't really know how. Well, this is quite a nice simple one. Um, the, the idea is you've got a lighthouse um, and you have to turn it on, so if the sun is on, or the sun is out, the lighthouse is off. If the sun goes away, the lighthouse turns off because it's now night time. So you program using if-then statements to turn the lights on or the sound on. You can change that to be a train set or there's a great Christmas one where you can make all the lights flash. Uh, again, a bit of programming um, and at a smaller level. We talked about Scratch, which is the next one on here. Has anyone seen coding? Has anyone not seen coding? Oh, shame on all of you if you haven't seen Kodu, um, because this is free. It is a good product from Microsoft, um, and it's free. Yay! I was there for the last few days, I'm allowed to say Microsoft Research, actually, too. Oh, oh there you go. So, not even the real Microsoft, the, the ones that get to play. Uh, no, this, it's, it's good. I mean, it's, it starts, there's lots of tutorials on there as well. Um, I know a lot less than most of my children do. I've done the first tutorial, which lets you put a little character on, and collect an apple, and that's it. And I showed that to a bunch of children, to two children, um, because we had the BBC coming in a few days later. So I showed that to a few children and said, right, your job, 
run a club for the next three days because on Friday there's a camera in your face so we need to get some of this up, up and running and they were playing around with it and after and so on the Thursday they said how do you how do you get the character to do this and this and this you know more than I do I've spent three or four minutes on this you spent two lunch times so you are now more advanced than I am now as a teacher that doesn't scare me at all doesn't bother me same about the mountain that actually a bit further ahead I don't care that my children know more than I do I know if they have a question, I can probably Google it, or Bing it, sorry. Uh, I can find it online. I've been with Microsoft for two days, I have to be, keep, I keep saying Bing. Um, uh, you can find it online. There's tons of YouTube tutorials. Um, there's one that I put up just here. This is a simple tutorial that just shows you how to make a simple thing on Coded. So I said to my children, well, why don't you go and have a look at what you can do? Don't ask me, go find yourself. And they did. And they go through and they make some games. And actually we've now given, I mean they've just left because they were year six, but we've given a couple of our children Camtasia, which lets them make their own tutorials, which will then go on the school website. Because they'll know that next year's lot will want to do it as well, so they can have a play. So code is great fun and it's free. We like free stuff in school because we haven't got any money left. So free is really useful. The thing that children like, um, or one of them did, because he's the only one that had one, um, if you have a plug-in Xbox controller, does it work wirelessly? Question X. No. If you if you have a plug-in Xbox controller, which I'm not really sure where you get them from, apart from eBay, you can actually control the whole thing using the Xbox controller, which is quite cool. But no one has them, sort of wireless. Um, but you can make all sorts of games. I've seen uh, Pong made with that. Frogger was a great one. Um, literally, just this weird little thing trying to get across while the big robots go across the road. Uh, loads of examples on there, and they're all in the tutorials as well. Scratch, most people in here um, know about Scratch. I don't at all. I have seen it. I wouldn't want to stand here and talk to you about Scratch when I have Miles in the room because I would feel embarrassed. He's shown me more about Scratch than anyone. I've seen you present on it and that just gone, wow, that's really simple. Next year we're going to be putting this into our curriculum as well. Um, but we've had children that said, I've heard of this Scratch thing and I've played with it at home. Can I show other children? Yes. You find out when, and I'll come and sit there if you want me to. Now, I'm lucky in the school in that I am a bit of a loser and I will give up a lunchtime or two to supervise, but it doesn't happen in all schools. But we do try and say to them, look, Scratch is free, Coder is free, Exploder is free. You know, go and try these things, go and have them play. So those are the sort of things that we're doing in primary. Now, I know in secondary, they'll then take Coder or Scratch or whatever and go on to a whole nother level but this is what's kind of happening in our primary schools. So there's a few sort of thank yous to people that have, have done that. My blog is at the bottom if you want to have a look at any of those resources. Uh, if you want to have a look at the, you know, I want to show you anything more, then please ask any questions or anything. But that's kind of what we do in, in our school at least, and quite a few other schools too, actually. Yes? What's your perspective on this transition from primary to secondary? That you're doing so many cool, exciting things, and well, there are cool. others in the room who are doing cool and exciting things at primary level, and then so many of our children go to secondary school and learn how to do PowerPoint presentations. Yeah. Again. I mean, we're, we're quite lucky. I spoke to my secondary school, um, and they said our IT is very good. And they were, they were happy, their IT was very good. Um, they said the issue they have is IT in English, IT in maths, yeah. IT everywhere else. So um, they're trying to work on, on that side of things. But yeah, we've had children that have come back at my old school. Year sevens have come back and visit, because they do for the first few weeks. Um, and they come back and they say, oh, you know, we've, we've, we did PowerPoint. We did, we did this and we, we did. And you know, I've, like I said, I've got year ones that can do PowerPoint, I've got year fives that can do Prezi. Um, we've got all of our children have email addresses and online accounts and they all blog and they, you know, and it is, it is such a shame when you hear about what's happening at secondary school. But, like I said, we don't have that A level, that GCSEs to aim for. We can pretty much do what we like. Yes, as long as we do. Because even if Ofsted come in, the state of ICT is so far down their list of things they've got to worry about, I, I don't think they'd ever come in and check ICT, unless they were doing a specific ICT check, which doesn't happen often. So we but can just I, get on and play. I have some bad news. The bad news is um, that, that, and again, I would love to hear more, but we're now unfortunately eating into lunchtime, which is largely my fault. I do apologise. 
Um, there's a tall plan leading from the mansion at 1 p.m., which is why I think we need to break now, so there's enough time for people to stuff at least one sandwich down <laughs> before the, the tour leaves. We'll try and make sure that we leave some food as well for when we get back. I'm going to recommend that, um, that we break until 2.15, if that's okay. Um, so back here at 2.15, there should be sandwiches and whatnot outside where the coffee was. The tour will probably leave, so they usually congregate either outside the front of the mansion or the tour guide takes everybody into one of the free rooms, the music room, or one of the other rooms and does a little bit of a presentation. But uh, Claire Irwin, who's the events manager here, will tell us where the tour is leaving from. She should be outside. Ian, thank you. I'm so sorry. I'm no, that's my sure. Um, but, uh, thank you.